if we look today at the British pound, you can see like we came up here. And if you go into a higher time frame, you will see you will see where we rejected from. Um, so if we switch back to the five minute chart, the question was, where is the setup here? So we get our confirmation here, which confirms um, that we are looking for a short, or at least that we know that the probability that price will close above the DR is below 15%. So if you would have watched this pair, it's like getting a confirmation. And then the question is, where should I enter? And I mean, there are plenty of fair value gaps in the price movement, but like why exactly this one over here is the one where you would look for an entry? And this is a one minute chart. So if you look into the five minute, it's get, getting even clearer because here the fair value gap in the five minute is exactly from here to here. So that's why the five minute gives you everything you need to know. So if we are talking about a perfect entry DR related and also ICT related, like very simple ICT related, because we have here the first structure break. It retraces back. We have the next expansion to the downside and we have this fair value gap, which is exactly going along with the 50% IDR line. This is this line. And it's also going when we take a normal Fibonacci, it's also going from the leg movement So also this, you can see like the candles and the fair value gap is between 0 0.5 and 0 0.61. So if we are talking about when to pick an entry and which fair value gap it is you want to enter, it's, it's definitely, this is the best entry today because it's literally confirming not only on DR base. So you have your confirmation, you know, you want to have a short trade here. Then it's retracing back into this fair value gap around the 50 IDR. And here is something interesting happening. So we first go up and then immediately price goes back under the 50. It's like, like I call this the rejection on these levels are very important. So if you watch it happening in real time, you can see that price is going over closing and then immediately the next candle is rejecting it. And if we go into the one minute chart, it's even getting clearer. So the one minute chart is closed. And then here you see the displacement and the rejection from this level going directly back below the 50% IPR level inside the fair value gap. And what do we have here? If I remove this fair value gap, or I'll just make it a little bit lighter. So in between, and this is one minute time frame. So all inside our levels here, you will find another fair value gap. Which gets respected from the body closes, it wicks through. So if you don't take this direct entry based on the fair value gap of the five minute, or like if you're looking at the one minute, it would be this one. This one is the next chance for you to enter. And you see. That's where it's getting important to look at DR. Um, when you're looking at the DR levels, you see this is so significant. So we close above, we have this beautiful displacement back below and look what is price doing here. One candle respects the 50%. Second candle respects the 50%. Third candle rejects again from the 50%. Price is not able to close above anymore. Every time it's getting rejected, rejected. So you could take the entry just here, just based on your analysis and the confirmation what you have from the DR, or you wait for this, the third confirmation in this case with the rejection displacement 
and then back into this more fair value gap. And even then you could take the entry here because that would be another confirmation. So there is so much entries in this segment of, of price action. And these are high probability entries, not only based on, on DR concept, also based on ICT concept. Because that's exactly where you want to look to find an entry for a trade. So and then we're coming to the situation where the stream was about. And like I really like what the streamer is doing. And I really appreciate that people come up and, and stream and talk with the people about. Because I think that's how you learn any concept. Let it be DR, let it be ICT. You have to start to, to do it, to talk about it, to see things. And the situation we had was, so this entry was already gone. And then the question was like, what do you have here? So we have here like equal lows. So we have this entry, market goes to the downside, takes out the sell side liquidity here on this level. So now the big question was, where would I enter? Where is my, this one is the perfect entry, but let's say you miss this one. So you see this price action coming down here. So now the question is, we have a lot of fair value gaps here. This one, this one, this one, and so on. Like there, you can see there are a lot of fair value gaps here, right? But what is telling you, or like what would be a high probability entry for this, for the coming next movement, which is here. And that's, that's where the confusion came up because like he streamed and he said the probability, the high probability fair value gap would be this one. And I understand why he said that, but it's technically it's wrong. It's wrong in terms of DR and it's wrong in terms of ICT. It's right when you only look at price action in terms of the YouTube model 2022. Because the YouTube model just tells you, okay, you have a break of structure, you have displacement, and then you look for a fair value gap, which would be about 50% retracement, right? So in this case, we would take our FIP here. And we would see, okay, 50% is here. This here would be somewhere optimal trade entry. And that's also how he came to the conclusion saying like, these two fair value gaps are more interesting. But literally the mistake here in the thinking process is that this would be, this is not a YouTube entry anymore. This is not a 2022 entry anymore because the YouTube model entry for just ICT basics would be either this one, depending on how you have your rules set for, is this a structure break or not? Some people would say, like me personally, I would see this as a structure break. Um, others would say, no, they want to see more displacement or better close below that. That depends on, on, on anyone. But like the real entry for the YouTube model would be this one. So either you take this entry as YouTube model or that. So now what you want to have is that price extends to the downside. You don't want to see price retracing here and that also confirmed or like is confirmed from the dr because we already have one time close below the dr low and then we are retracing and now we are starting the next down movement which is closing and making a new low over here we see we have here we have another sell side liquidity point so Everything here tells us like that we should not expect a retracement up to the higher fair value gaps. So if you want to take a high probability trade, you want to expect a rejection from DR or IDR here. Thing here is, as you can see, we have one candle, two candles, three, four, five, six, seven, eight candles, rejection from the IDR inside this fair value gap and that's why this one is the fair value gap you want to trade in this example because we already had the youtube model and price the more price would come up here 
the more unlikely it would be that the trade is high probability. So there is also like a balanced price range over here, um, like this. So who was watching my videos also knows that for me, like if I'm talking about a BPR or a balanced price range, I don't want to see price going in there. The maximum for me is that we see a wick into it. But in this case, after we already had two times expansion to the downside, I want price to respect it's not even wicking into this one. So that takes out this fair value gap and it takes out this one because like if we break through this or even if we wick into this, it would be weak for the movement. I mean, look where we are coming from the whole day. We are coming literally, we have seen a rocket. So if you want to trade short and we trade short because DR is telling us so, we want to see that price is keeping this structure up. Lower low, lower highs, lower low, lower highs. And the most significant point is really watching the price reacting to the price levels of the DR or the IDR. And that tells you a whole story. I mean, it can't get any clearer that here price is having a problem to go through. It's getting rejected, the algo switches his model and um, wants to go lower. And that's exactly what is happening. So if you missed this entry, then this is your fair value of what you want to look for. Does that make sense? And it, it's really not complicated. It's really like try to, when you look at price, to see what price is doing at levels. Look at reactions of, of like, for example, inside this fair value gap. Like for me, I could trade DR without any ICT concept or with any model because I just understand what is happening inside this fair value gap. And I will, I know why the algo has to respect it. Yeah. But still for me, it's a double confirmation. I know I see the rejection here from the level and I see the fair value gap here. I see, I mean, there is a lot of more when like there are order blocks and all of this stuff inside here, which are IT related. I'm not drawing them out, but like, the people who are doing a lot of ICT will see that. So I have so much things confirming this entry to me that it's turning into a very high probability trade. So, and also people ask, yeah, but like, how can you set a tight stop? It's just very simple. Like if you are, you want to have no risk, just what I said, like a stop level, when you enter here after the rejection, so here we have the rejection and rejection again, like let's say you enter here. You could place your stop level here, based on what I said, we don't want to wick even into the, the balance price range. If you allow wicks, you can have your stop up here. Yeah. Or if you see what I would see, it's just simply, I, I don't even have to put my stop up here. I can trade it like this. Because like at this point, I don't want the market to close above the IDR anymore. So. You can place your stop here. Your target is the sell side liquidity down there, which is also going in line with the zero point. Just one minute. Yeah, a, this line is the 0 0.5 standard deviation. So that's exactly what you're looking for. Pair your standard deviation with sell side liquidity in this case. So that would be a very easy trade. Just enter. Based on what you have seen here, you put your stop here and your target is the sell side liquidity. That's 5.4 risk units with, like, in my opinion, I mean, maybe I'm in my tunnel and I don't understand the logic, but like for me, this is an extreme high probability trade. I would take it 90% of the time when I see it, when I watch the live. Um, price actually happening, this is a trade which is so highly likely to be successful. And it gives me a clear scenario because if, if price goes up above this, I have to ask myself, okay, we are closing above the IDR. Is my concept still valid? Is my trade idea right? 
So I'm very happy to risk one one R in this case to to see. And I know when my stop is getting triggered here, I know that the probability for my scenario will be lower than it was before. And then I can rethink and I can say, okay, do I really want to start trading when we go into the BPR? No, I would not trade anymore. So that's it. That was my setup. And that's like really what I want to show here is the understanding how to combine DR, IDR levels with simple, simple stuff from ICT teachings also. I'm, I'm not even talking about a charter member like Danny, um, who has like such a waste, a uh, vast uh, waste, who has such a, a vast knowledge when it comes to ICT. Like they can tell you 10 other things why to take this trade here, but for you, just looking at DR, having a basic understanding, having a basic logic, this will present you a trade which can net you 5R. And who has seen what I was talking about um, on Twitter yesterday and in the Discord also, like to take $10,000 to 1 million, it only takes 81 weeks from $10,000 to 1 million with 1% risk. And you need to make 6R per week. So only this trade has 5R. I mean, like maybe, maybe I'm really in my tunnel and I'm completely delusional. And I think it's, I think everything is easy, but like, I'm, I'm sorry. That's really how I see the markets and how I see DR and how I see combination between DR and, and ICT. Um, I mean, I don't have to talk about this one. Like if you take this trade, um, depends on your, on your risk appetite, but like stop levels for this trade. If you go just blind into the 5 million value gap, you have your stop level here. Right, let's switch into the five minute. So you could have your stop level here. You could have it here over this body's uh, open price, or you can simply go the the simple way, have it above IDR. But even this trade will net you with the wide stop loss. If you enter just blind 50% of the fair value gap, and your target would be a new low, and the buy side liquidity, uh, the sell side liquidity down here, no, that's a long trade. So that would be 2.24 risk units with, again, an extremely high probability trade. So you don't really, like, I know people are looking at this movement and thinking, wow, I could have made whatever, whatever. But I tell you, I don't even... I don't want to trade this. I don't want to play around here. I'm not fading anything. I'm not entering anything here because this is low probability. You have to understand. I told my Discord that you can get the data earlier than anyone else. And this is true. Just, just check it, research it, you will find your answer. But for a matter of fact, even you, if you would know the CPI data two minutes before, it's not going to help you because None of us, including me, has the capability to see, based on the data you're getting, what the algos will do, in which direction they will drive. Today it was easy because somebody fat fingered and somehow started the algo before it should start, so you could see what the algos want to do. But that's not happening every day, so or like every time we have high impact news. But this is this is t completely not interesting to me. I scan for trades in a controlled environment. This is not a controlled environment. I want to trade in controlled conditions. Yeah. So, and in these controlled conditions, in my parameters, and the DR is a map for me. So I know once we have a confirmation, I know the probability that we close above the DR high in this case is below 15%. So even if I would take a short uh, long trade for any reason here, let's say I take any long trade inset here, I would have my target below the IDR because 
having targets above here or new highs has just a probability of below 15%. And below 15% is a lot. You have a bigger chance to win in the casino and get a millionaire um, inside the casino than trading against the DR. And that's not just me like coming up with this number. These numbers are proven. So yes, you can be lucky and you can get a day where we see both sides of the range. But like me personally, that that's like set in stone for me. I don't trade against the DR. And if I trade, my targets would be somewhere in here. And that's why I say this little box of DR and IDR gives you a map. That's where you can make decisions. Everything in between here is, is the, the playing field. Yeah. Everything above or below is where we see expansion. So all you need to have to understand is like, once we have the confirmation, price will highly likely not close above here. So, and then you just go from here. Then you take your fair value gaps, you look at the levels, you look at the reaction which price is showing you, and that's all you need. It's, it's literally, it sounds simple. Maybe it's too simple for me, but that's reality. That's what is happening day and day and day and week and month and years. Nothing is going to change. Nothing. So just this example, and like, even if you don't look the one minute, I mean, this is just beautiful for me. It's like watching Netflix. Direct rejection, not able to close above it. Boom, we are going down. New lows. And here, what we what we looked at at the at the one minute chart, even it's very clear. First rejection, IR. So this it can't get clearer. Then it's not even able to close, or it's opening already below the DR is not able. So there are so many ways. Like you could even take this trade with the small fair value gap. So may, maybe I'm, like I said, like, like, I hope it makes as much sense to, to you as it does for me. I mean, it's just for me, sometimes maybe too obvious. And for people who, who have experience with it, it's just, I don't know. It's just so easy. And now that was the GPP. So. I love the streamer. I love that he's streaming. I just wanted to clear that up. Why in particular it's important. And like when Danny is coming, Danny is really a god when it comes to ICT. So whenever you have a question or you think about ICT concepts, he is a charter. And me personally, I learned so much from him when it comes to ICT concepts. He is really good. So he's not coming into the stream to shame anyone or um, to tell anyone you're stupid or something like that. He's really like, when he's giving his opinion, you can bet that it makes sense. And like, there is a lot to learn from these guys. There is, there's Danny and there, are, there is Nindo. These are really, I can tell you high profile guys, which really have a knowledge. And I'm not saying that because there are mods here. No, because I personally watch both of them for more than two months now. And I know what they are saying makes sense. Yeah. So. Don't take it wrong. Um, it's just something which, which really makes sense and will help you. And that's the point. Nobody in this discord goes into the stream from somebody and says, you're talking bullshit. Um, like it's just it, at the end of the day, what Danny did is something which will help you, not the streamer, not Danny himself. It's something when you see him telling you something, you should think about it because He's telling you that, and that will help you to become a better trader. That's a very important point. I mean, Danny should have not necessarily said clown, but like, I think uh, that's not gonna, that's not the point here, you know? So this example, uh, understand, and the people who, who've been in the stream will understand that. And I really like the stream, but like, this is an important thing. Why? You don't want here in this price section, you don't want to see price going in any, in this area anymore. For me, price up here means I don't want to short it anymore. Might, might play out even when it comes up and it goes down. But for me, I just don't want to take this trade. If market wants to go lower, if the price wants to go lower, it has to, to respect and show me this rejection here. 
So now we can switch to SPX because a lot of people, like especially right now this week with the rollover, are a little bit confused with the different contracts. So I make it very simple for myself. So I just watch the SPX more than I'm watching the future. And then I make my trade decisions based on what I see in the SPX price action. Because there is no contract rollover, it's a clean price action you will find. And based on that, it also gives you a lot of information. So for me, the SPX is a very important tool when I'm talking about index. So if you if you trade the, the NASDAQ, you take the NDX. If you trade the Dow Jones, you take the DJI. So both of them, that's, that's the cash indexes. But they have the cleanest price action. And because price in the, in the index is calculated on the stocks, it, it, like this is very hard. This price action to be manipulated is very hard. Because if you want to manipulate the SPX price, <clears throat> price feed, you need to manipulate all the stocks. So we are talking about 500 stocks and you all have to move them in the right direction with the right percentage to move the price of the SPX. So of course you can do a lot with futures because at the end of the day, a future is also backed up by, by stocks position, but it's very complicated. So that's why here you will have the cleanest price action in terms of seeing what is happening. And this one was even clearer today. So same situation, we have the confirmation to the, to the short side. What we see, the SPX has a price gap down here. Normally a very interesting PD array to look for. So many times there are statistics, you can, you can check them for yourself, but it's a high, very high probability that gaps are getting closed during the day. So, and now if we switch, that's the same time range we were looking at GPP. So if we go down, we will see the confirmation which happened here. So now look at the price action. So price goes down, makes a new low, goes up, getting rejection from where IDR. Price again, gets rejected again, tries again. But this time, what do we have here? We have two equal highs forming internal buy side liquidity. What we have here, we have a fair value gap up here. So what do we have here? Now we're taking this fair value gap. Price gets rejected and immediately displacement. So now we have a fair value gap here. So you can take any entry here on the way down we have another fair value gap so even if you don't take this trade you wait like i like sometimes when i'm not like 100 percent sure i like to see reaction so i have this i see this with my eyes i don't have to, to print it on my chart and when i see this reaction immediately the retake of the idr levels that's like you can wait for a confirmation you don't necessarily have to jump in right here into a fair value gap <clears throat> so you can wait and see what is price doing so that gives you extra confirmation extra confidence in the in the trade what you're taking and even when you take it here and then this becomes just so simple it's just clear clear I don't know, it can't be clearer. Price action is beautiful these days. So here we're closing below the DR and we go up again and we see another rejection. So there's so much hints for you to understand. Price is telling you literally what it wants to do. And if you take the trade here where you put your stop level. So like me, if I would have taken this trade, my trade, my stop would be here. If you want to be the point is the same like in the other example. Does it make sense to have your stop up here, up here, or somewhere else? In my opinion, no. If I take such a trade, I know that in, in the worst case scenario, price will retrace that. So maybe here. So this is always a possibility. You will never know. When you enter this trade right in this candle, you have to have in your head, okay, price could 
go higher. There is no problem. There is no rule which is telling me, no, this can't happen. That's always a scenario you have. But like in my mind, I'm just telling me, okay, I'm, when I want to take this trade, I'm just saying, okay, if market goes higher, I get stopped out. I lose one R and that's fine with me. And then I will see where I will enter the next trade, right? So you see the price action, low, high, low, high. And you see SPX was, was literally having a very clear price action with respecting every single high and then continues to go down. Like there's so far not really any, any short term high or intermediate term high low, which was, which got broken. So, and that's what I'm always thinking. I'm like, okay, what price action will we see most likely today? And when I see such a trade, I just want to take it with this stop because I'm saying, okay, if market continues with the, with the market structure we have seen or price structure, I don't expect this high to be taken out. If it takes out this high, that would mean for me that we could go higher into a higher retracement level. But like if this level holds, we will see just more expansion to the downside. And that's just the logic behind. But nobody can give you a guarantee that you will not lose here. And it's fine. You really have to embrace and have a logical reasoning in your head to say, okay, if I enter a trade, there's always a chance you lose the risk unit you are risking. But if this should be fine for you, because like you trading is a probability game. Even though with, with TR, IDR, and with ICT, you're already playing on a very high probability normally, if you do it right. But still, there will be trades you're losing. There will be days when the DR, IDR is not wrong. But like that's not what you're looking for. What you're looking for is entering high probability trades with the, with the right logic, with, in the best case, three or four things which are confirming. In this case, sell side liquid uh, buy side liquidity taken here beautiful equal highs generated fair value gap rejection below the, the idr confirmation to the dr low this is like this is stacking up this is giving you good and high probability trades so that's why i would put my stop here it's no problem like if you're a little bit less risk appetite I would put it here, but my problem putting the stop up here would be just simple. When we go over here, I don't have guarantee or like the probability is not really extremely high that this level will be not broken. I hope that makes sense, right? Because at the end of the day, um, this is just a level when, when price action goes above these levels. I, I don't, I don't have a high probability that this level will hold because like it can go also up here, it can go up here. So that's why I like to have a tight stop and I'm saying myself, okay, this is for me high probability. I know if price goes below, above this level, it can go higher. So I'm doing the best setup, which personally for my trading um style is it, it's making the most sense so no matter if i enter here or i enter below um and like we are taking only the low hanging fruit so you you see like like you can try this trade five times and still one only one trade will will bring you into plus and if you look closely and if you follow these patterns and you follow the price action it's not going to happen that you lose five like i will say out of 10 trades i'm taking i'm making losing two of them three of them so don't worry it's it's like really you have to get this mindset so if you low go in here in the second fair value gap or with the idr check and still 2.58 if you take this one you're still ending up with a, with a positive risk reward ratio. So, and if you look to the other side also, like in this case,
system. Do you have to take the 0 0.5? No, because like is the statistic telling you when you have a downside confirmation? Who can tell me? Wednesday, no, it's Tuesday today, sorry. Tuesday, true days, how much is the normal standard deviation based on 17 years of statistics? Is there something going on in the chat which I have to look for? Is it really 0 0.71? Come on guys, not guessing, just check it. 0 0.71, 0 0.78. 